check out BigBadToyStore.com for this and other great toys. Hmm. So I guess you can teach an old wave new tricks. What's up, YouTube land? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the fans' toys, Quake Wave. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So here we have him, I have to lay him down here. Here we have the box with a very nice piece of artwork there of Quake Wave. It says Quake Wave and stuff, Quake Wave. Fan Stories website on this side. You got Fan Stories Quake Wave, Fan Stories Quake Wave, and Fan Stories Bada 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 Bada. On the back, you have your obligatory product shots. He does this, he does that, he does the other, and yes, he is a robot. And oh, yeah, he's a gun too. So, yeah, that. And you open up the box, and there you have a little schematic picture. And there's your tray with another little obligatory product shot. And the cool thing is, is once you, uh, once you open up the box, if you undo the tape at the top and the bottom here, you can just open this part up, like that, and you have access to your figure, which is a cool little feature. That's neat. It's different. It's interesting. But it's a box. So we don't need it! And of course, in the box you do get your instructions, which look a lot like Masterpiece Instructions. They're pushing the envelope, people! These third-party companies are pushing the envelope. And, of course, you do get your little collector's card, which is that nice, uh, you know, thick credit card stock. And, yeah, it's a, it's a collector's card with pictures on it. There you guys, tech specs there. Yeah, it's a collector's card that I will do nothing with, except put it back in the box and never look at it ever again. So, there you have that. So, let's get down to the nitty and the gritty. So here we have Quake Wave, who of course is an homage to Shockwave, our favorite big purple gun. And um, yeah, very, this is a very nicely done figure. I really, really like it. Get in close here. Take a look here at the barrel. Done in nice silver paint. Got some nice uh, purple detailing is going on in there. Nice molded details. Very nice. On the inside there you have a nice uh, piece of transclearance purple plastic. A nice effect going on in there. And just a lot of nice molded in details going on, especially back here. Lots of nice molded details. You got the sight here with the crosshairs done in transparent plastic. Very nice. And if you don't like this, it is on a on a hinge here, so you can bring it down if you don't like it, but it should be brought up. Very nicely done. Now the only die cast in this guy are these pieces right here and what will be the feet. So that's pretty much the only die cast. But it's nice because it does give it some good heft. You know, it has it has a nice weight to it. I like that. It does it just doesn't feel like a cheap, you know, plastic toy gun. It's, it has some beef to it. And I do like that. So I appreciate it. This this I feel is die cast done right. This is the way you should have it. Like not too much, not too little. This is I think just the right amount of die cast, and it's where it needs to be. Um but very nicely done. You do got the rubber hose here. Now, um, I don't own a G1 Shockwave, and of course I've heard the horror stories of G1 Shockwaves that over time, this hose, if not taken care of, can, you know, crack and basically disintegrate to nothing. I don't know if that will be the case with this hose. I mean, um, I, I don't know if there have been any revolutionary leaps in hose technology. Maybe, I don't know, but hopefully this one will not suffer the same fate. Hopefully this will, will keep just fine and, uh, you know, withstand the years and the wear and tear that one could put on a rubber hose. I don't know if that made any sense, but... Anyway, um, there is no actual trigger. It's just there. I mean, you can kind of rest your finger on, on this little divot right here if you want at least the feel of a trigger. But, I mean, I have small hands, so for me, this fits just fine in my hands and, and fits quite comfortably. For somebody with bigger hands, this might be, you know, a little too small. But for me, this is this is just right for a, a big purple laser gun. You know, this is a good size. This is the size I want my space guns. So... Very nicely done. Um, it doesn't stand on its own. I mean, you can kind of prop it up. Um, somebody did actually make a stand for this. 
So you can have them displayed in gun mode. And it is a nice stand. I doubt I will buy it because I am I have no desire to actually display him in gun mode. But it's cool that, that somebody did come up with a way to give you that option. So if you want him displayed in gun mode, you can just prop him up on that stand and have it nicely displayed. Um, he does have the one gimmick of he does have LED lights. If you just flick this switch right here, see right there, you get a nice bright red LED, and the camera really doesn't do it justice. This thing is actually quite, quite bright. It shines right through. So, yeah, very, very nicely done space gun. I like it. I like it very much. And, of course, you know, I mean, it's blatantly obvious. Oh, look, there's the chest. There's the arms. I mean, you know, it's it's a shockwave. It's, it's pretty much how it works as far as your uh, shockwave space guns go, but... A very, very cool figure, nonetheless. I mean, some people have complained, oh, things are not the right shape, it shouldn't look like that, I don't care, this thing is awesome. Really don't care. Any little inaccuracies, I can totally overlook, because this thing is, frankly, I think it's amazing. But, um, we'll get down to transformation, shall we, let's? So the first thing you're going to do, well, let me bring the camera up. First of all, whoa. Don't dip on me, camera. Stay where I tell you to stay. You stay. Stay, camera. Stupid tripod. I need a new tripod. There we go. <sighs> stupid cameras. There we go. Stupid tripods, actually. The camera's nice. I love my camera. It's a stupid tripod. But anyway, first thing you're going to do is you're going to come here to the barrel. You're going to take it and split it, like so, and remove it from this whole section here. And if you'll see here, there is a slot right here, and when you're putting this, putting him in gun mode, this tab right up top will slot in right there. So you're just going to take it, and you see there's that this little groove here that's meant for the barrel of the handgun. And you're just going to take it, tab it in, and just wrap this around, and then it'll tab together. Like that, around the barrel of the gun, so... Just wanted to show you how you do that. So we'll take this piece, put it to the side for now. And we're going to start uh, from the bottom and work our way up. So you can take this piece right now, bring this up, and bring this back right now. And you'll see there is a uh, little post here that goes into that port right there. Just put, plug that right in there. Come back here. You're going to take these panels, flip them up, and you'll see this tab right here. It'll tab into this slot right there. Get that. Tab it in. Get that. Tab it in. Then you want to take this piece right here, bring it down. It does tab into the body. The best way i found to get this out is to just take the handle and just kind of flex it up. And that'll make those untab. And you'll see they tab in right there. So you're just going to take those, bring them down. And I found that it helps if you split the legs first, because this part is kind of hard. You just want to take this whole assembly here and split it apart. Like that. And this is the part where you extend the legs. I've had a lot of problems extending these legs. These things are super, super tight. So hopefully I can do this. There we go. That's not easy, people. That is really like crazy, crazy, crazy stiff. Extend with the greatest of ease. Ease. There we go. Jeez, man. I did something I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do that yet. Here we go. So yeah, once you've exerted all your energy extending the legs, you want to take them and you want to rotate them 360 at the top of the hip here. So you want to rotate the entire leg. Not 360, 180, I'm sorry. I got my degrees all messed up. So, once you've done that, you're going to take these pieces here, you're going to bring them down and bring them around and you'll see this tab right here, I'll tab into this slot right there. Take it, tab that in, right there. Come in here, so I'll flip out the feet, nice die cast feet, flip out the heel, get in there, and there you have a leg. Second verse, same as the first. Bring that down, bring that around, 
dab it in, flip out foot, flip out heel, and there you got his legs all done. Raise the camera up because he's going to get a little tall. Now you're going to take his whole upper torso here and you're going to pull it up and that will, and this is hard too. Come on, man. Come on. There we go. It's going to extend it up a little bit there to expose more waste. <laughs> One thing about this figure is everything's nice and tight. A little too tight, but nice and tight. It's kind of with uh, the same thing with Hi uh, Hypernova. You know, it's it's a little too tight. If I have any complaints, it's that things are a little too tight, especially just in the legs and this piece right here. Just a little. It needs to be not so tight. But now what you're going to do here is you're going to split the arms. Well, first you're going to split the arms, and then you're going to rotate them. Rotate them around. Like so. You're just going to bring them down like that. You're going to leave them like that for now. Now you're going to come to these sides here and flip out these panels. Bring the whole chest piece down. You're going to raise up the head. Get the shoulders out of the way there. And bring that back up. And close these panels back up. Now you can bring the arm the rest of the ways down. Then you're going to come here. Open this panel up. Get out his hand, which also wants to be a pain. Come on, hand. Come on, hand. Stop fighting with me, hand. There we go. Close that back up. Now you can open up his fingers here. Then you're going to take this cannon hand here and just slide it over like that. And there you basically have him. Now you can take this piece and just leave it off to the side if you want, but you can actually store this in robot mode. So what you're going to do with this is, you're going to take this and flip it around the other way, like this, and connect it here. It can be a little hard because you're working with a lot of joints here. But you basically want to work it into a nice little, you know, box shape. Take this, flip it down. And you're going to take this panel right here on his back, you're going to raise this up, and you're going to plug this into this slot right here. And that'll plug onto his back. And you kind of have to get this piece out of the way a little bit. And you're just going to take this, bring it down, and that'll close up. And you can bring this piece, the instructions say to bring this piece up, like that. And once you do that, you can actually get this piece back flush against his back here. Raise that up. And it just makes a nice little backpack. So that's cool. And there you have Quake Wave in his robot mode. And this figure is just freaking amazing. Now this is basically Fans Toys version of a Masterpiece Shockwave. Well, not their version. It's the only version. It's basically a Masterpiece Shockwave. And I... I think it's suiting. I mean, this will definitely sit on my Masterpiece shelf. This thing is freaking awesome. It's wonderfully, wonderfully done. Now, he does have the transclearant, you know, cannon hand and hand, and I believe that's an homage to the original G1 toy. They do have uh, non-transclearant pieces that you can uh, swap out. Um, they don't come with this package, but I believe you can buy them separate at Big Bad Toy Store. I believe if you bought it off of... Uh, What's the name of the site? Captured Prey. I think they included the non-transclearant pieces, but it's okay. I mean, I, I don't mind the transclearant hand and the transclearance, uh, you know, gun. That doesn't bother me. But all in all, though, a very nicely done figure. Get in here on the head sculpt. Yeah, it's Shockwave's little mono-eyed head. Some nice silver paint. They got some nice silver going on here. And right behind the transclearant piece here on his chest, got a lot of nice molded in details going on there. That looks really, really cool. And just all around, just a very, very nicely done figure.
And of course, people complain, oh, his legs are the wrong shape. I don't care. This thing is awesome. And you don't question awesome. And again, the, 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 the die cast is where it needs to be. It's right here, just on the side of the leg, on his feet. And that's where die cast works because basically it keeps him stable. You know, you can plant him and he stays. It totally keeps him stable. And when you're posing him, it keeps him nice and sturdy. So not complaining one bit about die cast. I like die cast as long as it's done right. But all in all, though, a very, very nicely done figure. Um, Articulation-wise, his head is on a ball joint, so you can get some... You can't get a lot of side-to-side -side movement, but you can get some good up-and-down movement. Um, arms can do a full 360. They go in and out. Also, nice clickety-clackety joints. You got a uh, double-jointed elbow, which is very nice. Hands can rotate... Um, right here, the hands are jointed right here. The thumb is on its own ball joint, and each finger is on two joints. One joint right here, and one joint right here. So, All five fingers are articulated. You do get a waist joint. Legs can go forward. They can go back on a nice clickety-clackety joint. and go in and out, and these side pieces will move out to accommodate. You do get a swivel at the top of the hip as well as a swivel at the knee. You do get 90 degrees of movement there at the knee. Again, nice clickety-clackety joints. And the toes, you do get some up and down movement here on the toes, on the heels. The entire foot itself is on its own hinge, so you can move the whole foot quite a ways. And you also do get some nice ankle tilt going on there. So he is quite, quite poseable. And he does have light-up features. Again, you can just flick the switch right here, and the cannon hand will light up. Again, a nice bright red LED. I, I don't think the camera does it justice, just how bright this thing is, but it is, it is quite, quite bright. And also, if you come back here to the back of his head, you'll see there's a switch right there. You flip that switch up, and you get the glowing eyeball which again nice bright LED very very nicely done just so so cool really really digging this figure now another problem that people have had with this figure is the fact that the hose is on the top of his forearm instead of on the bottom of his forearm as it as it should be well fans toys gave you a solution for that they give you a baggy of parts Basically, once you dump this out, I'll bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Basically, you get a baggy old parts here, you get some screws, you get everything you need. And basically, what you'll do is you'll take apart this forearm and you'll put these pieces together. I don't know if I'm going to do it on mine yet, so that's why I'm just kind of giving you a dry run here. And you're going to take, let's see if I remember how this goes, you're going to take this piece right here, and then plug in this piece right here like that, and you basically have another form. So basically you're going to disassemble all this. I believe the downside to this is that you're going to lose the light-up feature. I think you have to basically gut out the light-up feature to, uh, to do this modification to it. So I, that's why I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. But basically what this allows is now this centerpiece here can rotate. So once you put it back together, the hose will be coming out of here. So once you have them in robot mode, you can take the hose and just rotate this piece, and it'll then be sticking out under his form like it should be. So it gives you the option of, of being able to do that. And again, you know, like I said, you have all the screws you need. They include everything you need. But, um, yeah, the only thing I don't like is the fact that you're going to lose the light-up feature with the gun if you swap out the form. So that's why I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. But it's nice that they gave you the option. They gave you this extra form with the rotating piece. I, I appreciate that. That's definitely, you know, going above and beyond as far as I'm concerned. So you have that option. But either way... Awesome figure, regardless. Like I said, any little inaccuracies, I can totally overlook because this thing is just, just amazing. Now, for comparison, here he is with Soundwave. 
as you can see, it, it does scale well with other Masterpiece figures. So, got him there with Soundwave. Here he is with Starscream. So you can see how they look together. Here he is with Masterpiece Prime. As you can see, they, they scale well together. He's a little bit shorter than Prime, which I think he should be. So, there you have that. And for the heck of it, there he is with Masterpiece Megatron, who is way too tall. Again, please, Takara, somebody, give us a new Masterpiece Megatron. Please! Please, please. 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 But anyway, as far as Quake Wave is concerned, this figure is amazing. I cannot sing the praises of this thing enough. Uh, I, I'm really so happy to finally have this guy. I just think he's awesome. He is just awesome. Like I said before, any little inaccuracies, I don't care. This is an awesome, awesome figure and definitely worth having. This guy will definitely be sitting on my Masterpiece shelf because he deserves it. He is definitely a Masterpiece. Uh, and... Um, a wonderfully, wonderfully done figure. It's just two thumbs up to fans' toys for putting this out. This thing is amazing. I could not be happier with it. You know, it, and I definitely recommend this. If you can afford this, if you have the means, pick this guy up. He is worth it. He is awesome. Buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. That's all I can really say. <laughs> so I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Fans Toys Quake Wave, and this is M Goes saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, palm in your face. Knee Shockwave. Yeah? Um... I've been meaning to ask you, so, um, you have one eye. Yes, I've noticed. Yeah, so, um, so how does that work? Is that, uh, is that hard for you? I mean, you have, like, depth perception issues? Do you get headaches if you read too long? I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering. What if you need glasses? I mean, really, like, like, what if you need glasses? How, how's that going to work? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, you're funny, you know that? You, you are, you're, you're hilarious, really. Hey, hey, have, have I introduced you to my new friend? Look, isn't he cute? His name is Crimzeek. Crimzeek! Yes, yes, he's, he, he, he's very cute, so, um, so what does he do? No! <laughs> that? <laughs> Which is why I can see better with one eye than you can with two. That means you're stupid. <laughs>